Good morning, friends. It is the last day, the last two chapters of Dinosaurs Before Dark. I still have our friendly Triceratops here with us. Here he is. He's taking up a lot of room on my couch though, so I'm setting him over there. Maybe he can be in my lap. There you go. All right, Mr. Triceratops. All right, we are on the last two chapters and then we're gonna move on to our next book. Well, I can't wait to see what's happening to Jack and Annie. We're on chapter nine, The Amazing Ride. Page 52, table of contents right there told me exactly where to go. All right. So as you remember, at the end of the last chapter, the Pteranodon was flying toward Jack. Chapter 9, The Amazing Ride. The Pteranodon coasted down to the ground. He stared at Jack with his bright, alert eyes. What was Jack supposed to do? Climb on? But I'm too heavy, thought Jack. Jack looked up at the, side, at the Tyrannosaurus. It was starting up the hill. Its giant teeth were flashing in the sunlight. Okay, thought Jack. Don't think, just do it. Jack put his book in his pack. Then he climbed onto the Pteranodon's back. He held on tightly. The creature moved forward. He spread his wings and lifted off the ground. Jack nearly fell off as they teetered, teetered this way and that. The Pteranodon steadied himself and rose into the sky. Jack looked down. The Tyrannosaurus was staring up at him and chomping the air. The Pteranodon glided away. He sailed over the hilltop and over the valley. He circled above all the duck-billed dinosaurs and all the nests filled with babies. Then the Pteranodon soared out over the plain, over the Triceratops who was grazing in the high grass. Jack felt like a bird. The wind was rushing through his hair. The air smelled sweet and fresh. Jack whooped and laughed. He couldn't believe it. He was riding on the back of an ancient flying reptile. The Pteranodon sailed over the stream and over the ferns and over the bushes. Then he carried Jack down to the base of the old oak tree. It's a pretty cool picture of his adventure on the back of the Pteranodon. When they came to a stop, Jack slid off the creature's back and landed on the ground. The Pteranodon took off again and glided into the sky. Bye, Henry, called Jack. Jack, are you okay? Annie shouted from the treehouse. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He kept staring at the Pteranodon. Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up at Annie and smiled. Thanks for saving my life, he said. That was really fun. Thank Henry, not me, said Annie. Come on, climb up. Jack tried to stand. His legs were a little bit wobbly. He felt a little bit dizzy. Hurry, shouted Annie. It's coming. Jack looked around. The Tyrannosaurus was headed straight toward him. Jack bolted to the ladder and started climbing. Hurry, hurry, screamed Annie. Jack reached the top and scrambled into the treehouse. He's coming toward the tree, Annie cried. The dinosaur slammed against the oak tree. The tree house shook like a leaf in the wind. Jack and Annie tumbled into the books. Make that wish to go home, cried Annie. We need the book, the Pennsylvania book, said Jack. Where is it? They both searched madly around the tree house. Found it, said Jack. He grabbed the book and flipped through the pages. He found the photograph of the Frog Creek Woods. Jack pointed to the picture in the book. I wish we could go home now, he shouted. The wind began to blow. Jack closed his eyes and held on tightly to Annie. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. So I hope you're starting to see a little pattern there. How did they get from one place to another? They had to find the book, 
and look at the picture of where they wanted to go. They had to make a wish to go there. And then the tree house would start to spin faster and faster until everything was still. And not just still, absolutely still. So I think we're gonna see a pattern there in all of these books. Chapter 10, Home Before Dark. Jack heard a bird singing. He opened his eyes. He was still pointing at the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. He, picked out, he peeked out the treehouse window and outside he saw the exact same view as the picture in the book. We're home, whispered Annie. The woods were lit with a golden late afternoon light. The sun was about to set. No time had passed since they'd left Frog Creek. Jack, Annie, a voice called from the distance. That's mom, said Annie. Jack saw their mother far away. She was standing in front of their house and she looked so tiny. Annie, Jack, she called. Here's a picture of them back home in their house so far away. Annie stuck her head out the window and shouted, coming. Jack still felt dazed. He just stared at Annie. What just happened to us, he said. We took a, trap, a trip in a magic tree house, said Annie simply. But it's the same time as when we left, said Jack. Annie shrugged. How did it take us so far away, said Jack and so long ago. Well, you looked at the picture in the book and said you wished we could go there, said Annie, and the magic tree house took us there. But how, said Jack, and who built this magic tree house? Who put all these books here? A magic person, I guess, said Annie. Oh, look, said Jack, I almost forgot about this. Jack reached into his pocket and pulled out the gold medallion. Someone lost this back there, he said. In dinosaur land, look, there's a letter M on it. Annie's eyes got round. You think M stands for magic person, she asked. I don't know, said Jack. I just know someone went to that place before us. Jack, Annie, their mom called again. Coming, Annie shouted again. Jack put the gold medallion back in his pocket. He pulled the dinosaur book out of his pack and put it back with all of the other books. Then he and Annie took one last look around the treehouse. Goodbye, house, whispered Annie. Jack slung his backpack over his shoulders. Annie started down the rope ladder and Jack followed. Seconds later, they hopped onto the ground and started walking out of the woods. No one's going to believe our story, said Jack. So let's not tell anyone, said Annie. Dad won't believe it, said Jack. He'll say it was a dream, said Annie. Mom won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say it was pretend. My teacher won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say you're nuts, said Annie. We'd better not tell anyone, said Jack. I already said that, said Annie. Jack sighed. Whew, I think I'm starting not to believe it myself, he said. They left the woods and started up the road toward their house. As they walked past all the houses on their street, the trip to the dinosaur time did seem more and more like a dream. Only this world and this time seemed real. Jack reached into his pocket and clasped the gold medallion. He felt the engraving of the letter M. It made his fingers tingle. Jack laughed. Suddenly he felt very happy. He couldn't explain what had happened today, but he knew for sure that their trip in the magic tree house had been very real, absolutely real. Tomorrow, Jack said softly, we'll go back to the woods. Of course, said Annie. And we'll climb up to that tree house, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. And we'll see what happens next, said Jack. Of course, said Annie, race you. And they took off together running for home. The end. That was such a good book. 
We learned a little bit, bit about different kinds of dinosaurs and what they eat and how they act. And we got introduced to the main characters of this entire series, Jack and Annie, a brother and sister. Um, so the next book I am going to start reading tomorrow, two chapters at a time, just like this one. Who would like to know what it is? Drum roll. Ooh, I've got it right here. Book number two, still by Mary Pope Osborne, Magic Treehouse, The Night at Dawn. I'm going to give you the little teaser on the back of the book. When the Magic Treehouse whisks Jack and Annie back to the Middle Ages for another wild adventure, they find a castle with a secret passage. In the Great Hall, a feast is underway, but Jack and Annie aren't exactly welcome guests. So that's where we'll start next time. Say goodbye to your Triceratops. He's not needed in the Middle Ages, is he? I wonder if I can find a prop for the next one. All right, y'all. You have a wonderful day, and I cannot wait to come into your home and read another book with you soon.